Right, today's little job, or well, well, hopefully not today, just this morning, because I've got plenty of other stuff to do. Uh, Brook Crompton electric motor off a belly cement mixer. Belly? Billy? Belly? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Anyway, one of those orange cement mixers, well known brand. Uh, seized up, suspected bearing, and not wrong. That one, got loads of play in it. I'll bring in a closer shot, look. Loads of play. This one feels smooth as anything, but this is the one suspected of the causing the problem. Um, I think the cage is broken up inside, so every now and then the bearings jam up. Either or either, you've got to put two new bearings on it. Um, I don't know where it was. Now, I stripped this the other day. This pulley, I've cleaned it up. Um, had to heat the hell out of it to get it off. Um, I might even actually put this in the lathe and bore this out a little bit because, say, thought like. Well, it was a bust. I had a puller on it and. Did I just say bust? I've said it twice now. I had a puller on this and was almost cherrying it to get off, which really was not that good. I wasn't happy about it, but it had to come off to strip the motor. So, you can see the shaft has got a bit warm, but I don't think it's caused any damage. Everything looks good. I've had it in the lathe and put a new centre on it because that got a little bit um, tappity tapped. Same the other end. Um, didn't film that because I was doing a bit of a rush. Uh, cleaned this up because it was quite rusty. So before I put this back on I will just see. It doesn't need to be mega tight, it's got a screw on it. So from eBay, a pair of bearings. All I did was measured the shaft, the width, and the OD of the bearing, and pretty much it comes up with a standard size um, 12 wide, 40 to outside diameter, and I think it was a 17mm shaft off the top of my head. So, new bearings on, assemble it. Here we go. Right, first thing, obviously, get the old bearings off. So, don't want all of this. These are the only bits I need. Now, first thing is how I'm going to get them off. I'm hoping I can just pull these off quite simple. We will see. So, I've got a, uh, a bearing puller. Uh, I got this for my little press. You've probably seen it in some other videos. Or at least I hope you have. But anyway. So, I'm going to put this on and I'm going to hope... Just a lead hammer will just drift that off. Fingers crossed. Is that enough? Yeah, just about. Right, let's see if the, um, the hammer will move it. That was on there, like so. Bearing. 
bearing identifications, you can go into depth about these. Um, off the top of my head, I think these were ZZC or something like that. Rubber sealed and uh, metal capped on both sides. Uh, that's good. That looks like that's going to be there. Right. So next thing, find a bit of tube. Obviously, when you put the bearings on, you want to be pushing them on on this surface, not the outer surface. You're just going to damage it. So next thing, I need to find a bit of tube. Uh, face it off on the lathe so it'll sit on there nicely. I can hammer them on. So I found a bit of tube. Uh, it's a bit thinner wall than I'd like, but um, it's the hand. And I'm not going to go searching high and low for a bit of tube that will be nice and fat, but this will do. So chuck it in there. I'm just going to square the edge up and off we go. Bang the bearing on. And that should be that. So there's the bit of pipe. I am. Um, I did the other end while I was off camera. That's good to go. Somebody give me a firm end. So, bearing one. There shouldn't be an inner and outer. What I'm going to do is put the writing on the inside. Excellent. One done. Right, let's do the next one. If you um, notice when I was actually using this this shaft here, slightly bent, the bolt, should I say, not shaft, slightly bent, um, I picked this up at a boot pair second hand and I suspect that whoever used it wasn't using it correctly and they had it in a press and they were supporting it here and here when you're using this kind of press in a press plate, or this kind of jaw in a press plate, support it there and there, across the two steel plates. Don't support each steel plate individually like so, because you're then, the stresses are going through the bolt. You want to go through the plate. So if you're using this kind of plate in a press, bearing press, you know, support it at either end. Okay, that said, I'm only doing this by hand. It's coming off nice and easy. Okay, so there's a circuit at that end. Strange. Whatever. Excellent. Two new bearings. Right, let's put this thing back together.
Right, one thing when you are stripping motors, and I'm not a wee expert, that's for sure, as you might have seen with my grinder motor that I've um, stripped and put back together, is if you're taking the covers off, mark them, especially on a one that looks like this, it's kind of a generic kind of shape. This one was easy, I know the space was at the top, so no problem there. This one, it can go anyway. As it happens, I don't think it really matters on this one, but I marked it anyway, so I know where it goes. Keep an eye out for um, shims or spacers. This one that's got like a, you can see it's, um, there we are. It's corrugated kind of shape as it goes round. It's a sprung washer and it goes in there. And it just preloads the bearing on this end. Now this, it looks like it will go on there with a gentle tap in. I don't really want to, but I think it will. But when you put bearings on like this, as I said, when you tap this in, try and tap it on the centre because the centre bit can take the load. You don't want to put the load on the outside through the bearings to the inner race. So same applies here. So if I go and bang this on, I'm putting the force on the outer race through the ball bearings to the inner race and you could quite easily damage the race. I think the amount of weight that's going to be put onto this to do that is going to be negligible. But what I'm going to do is just give it a gentle warm up and hopefully that might just be enough to push it on. I've got a hammer to hand just to give it a little bit of help but hopefully just a bit of a warm up will be enough to, to do it. Yeah, that's just, just warm now. There we are. That's what I wanted. Just that bit of heat was just enough just to flop it on there. No aggro. So, bottom plate's on. And we know that um, pushed on once it was warm. I just want to see what the top plate goes on like. That's going to push on by hand, that's good. So, let's put this in. Line my marks up. Uh, one thing I would say is obviously make a note of which way your shaft goes. So take photographs or whatever you want to do notes so I'm a spring washer I'm just going to lay in there and hopefully it will stay put Line your marks up.
sweet, excellent. Right, so I've got it all done up and let's give it a test, shall we? Lovely. So on this back end, I had a fan, which is just a press fit. But um, I might just put a little bit of glue on this. No, it's still quite a good fit. So let's just stand it up on the block and tap that on. over to the other end. Now I've put a bit of oil on this obviously because it was quite rusted on and so we had a hell of a game on this and just in case this never needs to come apart again a little bit of oil behind there might just help might not make any difference at all but right I won't tighten that drill up just yet because I want to put it on the um, cement mixer and just make sure that is in the right place Right, well that's on for what it's worth, but it's on there. So, let's get it reassembled. Can I do anything or not? No, it's done. At this point, I've got to show you a bit of bare leg, unfortunately. And um, we've done the mixer got it running up and we decided to do a few more repairs because basically the legs were starting to look a little bit shaky uh, the bottom two thirds of the legs on all four of them were starting to develop holes so we decided to um, brace these up although it was corroded at the top the sides seemed to be fine but you can see in this image here where the cement started flaking off and obviously it was starting to twist and move uh, not ideal you can just imagine this mixer collapsing with a full drum uh, 
that would be pretty chaotic. So uh, I found some tubing and we basically just sliced it into the bottom of each one. Uh, welded it onto the foot and just stitched it into each leg and then I welded each tube together in the middle at the, um, the top. Unfortunately I didn't get any footage of me doing it. We decided to do it spare at the moment and I didn't have time to set up a camera or anything like that. So with that I'm going to leave you and um, don't get too dizzy watching the next clip and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for your time. Ta-da. Thank you.